Welcome everyone. My name is Barbara McMillan, Provincial Community Engagement Coordinator for United Way of British Columbia's Healthy Aging Team. Thank you for joining us for today's On Aging Conversation. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional ancestral territories of all First Nations in this land we now call Canada, on which we gratefully work and gather. Health Aging Corps and Help Age Canada partner on this On Aging Conversation series. And if you missed earlier episodes, you'll find them on Apple Podcasts on Health Aging Corps Canada, the National Knowledge Hub connecting agencies that support and advance independent living for older Canadians. You'll also find our schedule of On Aging Speakers on Corps. And if you signed up for the Corps Canada e-news, which we really encourage you to do, it will be delivered, delivered to your inbox twice a month. And you can do that on the uh, bottom of the homepage of Corps Canada. On Aging Conversations was launched to help bring to a wider audience some of the ideas, innovations, and perspectives we are privileged to encounter in our work with the extraordinary network of community-based senior serving agencies, volunteers, and professionals in this country. Each conversation includes a short video that highlights one of these organizations that's making a difference in the lives of older Canadians, followed by Health Age Canada CEO Gregor Snedden in conversation with our featured guest, who today is Raza Mirza, talking about the Canada Home Share Program. And I'm especially excited about this because I sit on the Vancouver Area Advisory Committee for this very cool initiative. So sit back for the next 30 minutes to take a, in a dose of healthy aging information and inspiration, and feel free to introduce yourself and post your questions in the chat box. And now I'll turn it over to Gregor Snedden, CEO of Help Age Canada, your host for On Aging. Thanks, Barb. Well, welcome, everyone. Great to be here today. We've had a, a, some great sessions this fall, and uh, I've really been really looking forward to today's conversation as well with Dr. Raza Mirza. Um, for those of you who, who may be new to Help Age Canada, Help Age uh, Canada has been around since 1975. We're a founding member of, of Help Age International, and we support community-based initiatives through partnerships across Canada and overseas to improve the lives of older persons and their communities. Uh, and one of the exciting programs that we have um, uh, adopted this year is the Canada uh, Home Share Program, which we're just so excited about. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later, of course, with, with Raza. But also this it, coming up here in November is, um, is National Housing Month. So we thought what a great way to uh, kick that off would be to talk about the Canada Home Share Program and, and how uh, Raza has engage so fully in, in the issue facing housing and older Canadians. So as part of our video today, we, we, we're going to introduce a sh very short uh, video kind of introducing Canada Home Share, and then Raza and I are going to have a chat. And please feel free to po pop any questions into the chat link. And um, we look forward to uh, our conversation today. So Gemma, go ahead. Let's see the video. Canada HomeShare is an intergenerational housing initiative brought to you by Help Age Canada. At Canada HomeShare, we match older adult home providers with post-secondary students to live together. In exchange for safe and affordable housing close to campus, students are able to subsidize their monthly rent by helping it with tasks around the house and providing companionship. There are over 5 million bedrooms sitting empty across Canada. Many of these bedrooms are in the homes of older adults. At the same time, we're seeing students struggling to access safe and affordable housing. At Canada HomeShare, we make matches that benefit both parties. Older adult home providers are able to safely leverage their home for some extra income and practical assistance with tasks, and students are able to avoid long commutes, unsafe or crowded housing, and unaffordable rents, which allows them to focus on their academic success. Intergenerational engagement has been proven to reduce ageism, social isolation, and offers opportunities to learn and grow together. Here's what some of our home providers and students have had to say about their experience in the program. To learn more about the benefits of intergenerational living, visit our website at www.canadahomeshare.com. Thanks, Gemma. 
So that's just a little taste of the, the Canada Home Share program that we're just so excited about, um, which we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, first, I'd like, it's my absolute privilege and uh, pleasure to introduce Dr. Raza Mirza, who also happens to be the Director of National Partnerships and Knowledge Mobilization here with uh, Help Age Canada. He's also an assistant professor at the University of Toronto in the Institute for Life, Course and Aging. He uh, actually did his PhD and his master's of science and, and his doctoral degrees from the Graduate Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the University of Toronto's Leslie Dan Faculty of Pharmacy. Um, and he's had a, a, just an amazing career as he's grown and really worked with aging populations and as a, tr and a true gerontologist. And it's been an absolute thrill uh, and joy to have him on our team. But I've also had the privilege of knowing Raza for the last few years and we've become good buds. And the first thing I just really want to point out is that that awesome sweater you're sporting, sporting today, Raza. I mean, it is sharp. You are rolling into fall with panache. This is my um, fall sweater. And, you know, I thought it'd be really appropriate. I'm, I'm here in my mother's home, home sharing with my mom. It's, it really gives the full experience of home sharing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, yeah. Excellent. My fall cozy sweater. Yeah. Excellent. It's good because Raza is also an avid gardener. I've had the, also the privilege of seeing his amazing garden. So I can just see you out there pruning the vines and so on in a nice fall afternoon. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, thank well, you so much. Thanks yeah. so much for, for joining us today, Raza. And, uh, you know, we've had, we've had several adventures together and, uh, I, you know, really excited to talk a little bit about Canada Home Share, this amazing program that you've really been the, the visionary of, and that now we're working together to see, uh, uh, its next step. And, and, and as we expand now, uh, nationally, um, maybe first you could, maybe you could, you know, just say a few words here about, you know, how did you like what what is Canada Home Share responding to? What's the problem that's being solved? What's the challenge? Why is it so powerful? Can you sort of tell us a little bit about sure. that? Sure. I, I'd really like to first of all express that this has been a team effort since the start. And the team around it really started at the City of Toronto's senior strategy and the accountability table that is led by Andrea Austin, Dr. Samir Sinha, Councillor Matlow, Laura Tamlin Watson. Back in 2014, as part of the senior strategy, you know, which is part of a larger age-friendly initiative where they bring together stakeholders and partners, which is also part of my role here at Help Age Canada, what they did was they put together sort of an opportunity for people to really weigh in on what the needs of the communities were and really how the city could be very proactive and responsive to what the needs were. But, you know, if we think about what the needs are, we have to think about what they are on the level of the individual. We have to think about what the needs are on the level of the neighborhood. We also have to look at the societal needs. So I would say that overall, what the program was meant to address, and it came of a recommendation from the City of Toronto, was the fact that there were a lot more older adults expressing that they were socially isolated. There were a lot more older adults in the, in the City of Toronto who were expressing the fact that they were facing financial precarity. There were a lot more older adults who were saying, well, you know what, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to age in place in this community of my choice, and I really want to be able to, which gets us back to this notion of, you know, what's another issue that we're trying to respond to is, well, we don't want people in the neighborhoods that we're living in just to be simply aging in place, which often starts to feel like they're stuck in place. We really want them to be able to thrive in place. And what is it that mm -hmm. at the individual level, people really need to be able to thrive in place? Well, they need to feel engaged with their community. They need to be able to have the financial resources to go out with their friends and to really do the things that they want to. Um, and I think that they need to feel safe and secure and, and really independent. And I think that's what the crux of everything coming together was. And, you know, if we, we looked at the statistics a little bit more under the hood before we designed this program, there was a few really sort of interesting things that were coming up. 39% of seniors in in the city of Toronto, we're earning between $15,000 and $25,000 per year. 39, 39%? 39% would be considered low income. And if you just do a quick wow. math about, you know, what housing costs are like in the city of Toronto, you can see that that's very problematic. Um, you know, that this is also a very gendered issue. So there was older women who were impacted by this in, in very different ways. And so 
I think looking at those things and then looking at the other statistics, which is saying, well, 66% of older adults actually own their own homes. And if you look a little bit deeper, and this is something that people have been talking about more openly, is that in the city of Toronto alone, 2 million empty bedrooms sit in the homes of those older adults. If you look across this country, there's 12 million empty bedrooms that we could leverage to address some of the things that I'm talking about, social isolation, financial precarity, lack of engagement. If you look at the United States, 54 million plus empty bedrooms in the homes of older adults. And so here's where I think the opportunity really arose to suggest that, well, what can we do with that empty bedroom to address some of those issues that we're talking about? And some of the larger issues, again, ageism, intergenerational engagement, community engagement, supporting aging in place. And so the Canada Home Share Program, which started out as the Toronto Home Share Program, was meant to respond to those sorts of issues in a very sort of holistic way. And it's evolved to what it is now. And it's the Canada Home Share Program. And so I'll, I'll be happy to talk about that. That's, that's, that's amazing. I know we, you know, you've gone through these last couple of years, you know, it's been a, an amazing kind of pilot project as, mm -hmm. as we've, uh, you have engaged with different models and approaches to really um, address, you know, there's, there's a number of variables, as we know, to, to really make it work, different concerns, mm -hmm. different, different um, uh, opportunities to address that is only really discovered by trying. As we've mm -hmm. been doing, and and now we're really excited to be ready to uh, be rolling over now into our you know our 2.0, um, mm -hmm. which is which is uh, for the uh, rolling into the spring of 2023 that we're we're, we're really looking forward to unveiling uh, when the time uh, comes imminently. But you know, and you as you've been uh, engaging in this project, this this mm -hmm. program, what might have been some interesting kind of surprises or you know value adds that you hadn't thought of that emerged as you were going through the process of of matching students and and older people together? Well, I think the surprising part is, and you know, and I'll say this that Canada is finally facing its demographic destiny. You know, and we've known about this since the time I was a student in gerontology about 20 years ago. None of this is coming as a surprise. And, you know, we keep talking about that the population being is aging. It's actually not aging. It's already aged. And we, we've we been a few steps behind, I think, in other, uh, we've been a few steps behind other jurisdictions when it comes to addressing population-based issues. And I've been saying this in other conversations that I've been having is that it's because we think about the issues of the older population one generation at a time. And so I think that the challenges are that the new older adult and the future older adults needs and experiences are going to be completely different. And we have to continue to adapt and evolve what the needs and those experiences really are. What, what I've really learned from this program, and it's something that I've known, but I've actually been able to experience now is that growing older and aging is going to be unique for every individual. There's a, there's a profile of older adults, 65 plus, that we can't just simply capture in some homogenous way, and that we have to be able to have programs and resources and services that are able to be modular and adapt and really can be tailored to the unique contextual needs, not only of that individual, but of that community. And so the surprise is that I would say, you know, the sort of things that I never thought would be issues that would come up. People have concerns about participating in programs like this one, where they earn between 400 and 600 extra dollars. And you can learn more about the process and um, some of the other details on the website on canadahomeshare.com. But what you see is that earning between 400 and 600 dollars becomes a problem for somebody who's potentially low income. And the reason it becomes a problem is because they're worried that this additional income that they will get that will address things like isolation, their loneliness and their safety is going to lead to them having their pension income for guaranteed income supplement clawed back. I think the other part that's really been surprising for me is that there's been a lot of pushback from municipalities when we think about alternative housing solutions like home sharing, where municipalities are, are sometimes actually enacting bylaws to not support programs like this one. And you know, a very famous example are the, the Golden Girls of, of Fort Perry where the municipality actually said four unrelated women, older women living together, you know, this seems like it's an illegal rooming house or an illegal nursing home, and it's really not. But this is the sort of sort of policy legacy that we're sometimes facing when we're introducing models like this one. Now, home sharing is not new. The way that we've designed mm -hmm. this program and the way that Help Age has really thought about the evolution of it, that is unique and novel. But 
you know, these are some of the surprising parts, you know, on the larger scale that I've seen. I think the other parts that are really surprising to me are the fact that, well, older adults, and this is a good surprise, when they participated in this program, they were really able to expand their network organically. They met other people that were like them participating in this program. So it wasn't just a student living with an older adult who were getting to know one another. Participants in this program actually got to know one another and to engage with one another. And I think expanding um, opportunities, creating opportunities for older adults to expand their social network is one of the benefits that we really hadn't thought about beyond just the student mm -hmm. senior engagement. I think the other part that really surprised me is when we asked participants, you know, when you save um, $400 to $600 extra per month by participating in this program, what do you do with that money? They spend it on things like medications, they go out to the movies, they go out to dinner with their friends, and you can see how this all feeds into addressing things like isolation. So when we think about aging in place and the difference between earning $400 and $600, you can see what a difference this all makes, mm -hmm. especially when we think about the outcome of social isolation as a result of financial issues or not feeling engaged in your community. And then just two quick points that I'll tell you again, ageism. Number one issue when we're talking to students and saying, would you like to participate in this program in the city of Toronto or in Vancouver or in other big cities where you can get rent for $400 to $600? I think one of the barriers is the fact that students immediately say, well, why would I want to live with an older adult? I have nothing in common with them. But on the flip side, there's also older adults who are saying, I'm not sure if I want to live with a student. I'm not sure we have a lot in common. And once those two individuals actually do live with one another, we can address a lot of those, those ageist stereotypes and things like that. And the final point that I'll share about this is that there's a lot of nimbyism. There's a lot of older adults who are saying, I don't want people to know that I'm participating in this program. I love this program, but I'm not sure I want my neighbors and my immediate sort of close contacts to know about it because I don't want them to think that I'm some needy older adult, but I really just love participating in this program. So, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that intergenerational uh, participation, you know, you had mentioned it, we had mentioned it before about how it mm -hmm. can really address ageism itself, because mm -hmm. it, it from both sides, because it challenges our own assumptions on, on aging and uh, relationships with people. And, mm -hmm. you know, as we, we often point out is there's so few opportunities now in a current secular uh, Canadian society for, mm -hmm. for, you know, intergenerational engagement in any meaningful way. Mm -hmm. And what an opportunity uh, a program like Canada Home Share is uh, in a really intimate and meaningful way, bringing uh, inter, you know, bringing that, arcing that, bridging that intergenerational divide. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, you know, for me, the, the idea of intergenerational engagement is, is very problematic, especially since I've grown up in a home where we never even think about people of different ages engaging with one another. And I think about intergenerational engagement as this of us again having to backtrack and reverse course because we have not created opportunities for people of all ages to be engaged with one another, to participate with one another, to really learn more about one another. And so, you know, intergenerational engagement to me sounds like, well, we've we've developed this sort of individual individualistic age segregated society where now we actually have to facilitate opportunities for people of all ages to be engaging with, with one another. And, you know, going back to my earlier point about facing our demographic destiny, what we really have to remember that going forward is that our workplaces may have up to five generations. We might have homes where multi-generational living is the commonplace, again, three generations at a time. So creating opportunities for intergenerational engagement um, to learn about aging <clears throat> in gerontology. And I think just to create those opportunities is really, really important to address the issues that, you know, we had talked about earlier, ageism, isolation, et cetera. And when we create those opportunities, the number one thing that we hear and what we know is, well, I, I didn't realize that we had so much in common because what I was only focused on was the age difference. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Very much so. Yeah. Now, you know, there, there are, as you mentioned, there are other, um, you know, home share programs out mm -hmm. there. Uh, what, you know, what makes uh, Canada Home Share a little bit unique? What, what's its kind of special sauce, would you say? Well, I'll tell you that the, the program, 
besides being really driven by a number of visionaries who had ideas about how to create a program like this one, we studied over 50 models across the world. We were engaged in a knowledge synthesis exercise that led to a publication on co-housing, home sharing, et cetera. And so we really learned about the models that are out there. The concept of home sharing is not unique or new or novel in many ways. Like I said, you know, I'm in, in theory, I'm home sharing with my mother and my sister right now. But in a very formalized way, what that looks like is, is very interesting to me. And, um, and from our research, what I can tell you is that there's a number of things that people really need to have a successful home share match and then a successful home share arrangement. And so when we went through this academic exercise, 1400 articles, we reviewed all these different models we reviewed, there was a few things that people really needed. They needed the whole process to be facilitated by someone not themselves, because they didn't feel sure enough that they would be able to find someone who's going to be a really good compatible match for them. They didn't simply want someone who was renting their home and living with them to really successfully age in place and to do the things that they wanted to. They wanted to build relationships with someone. They, they wanted a connection with someone. That's number one. I think the other part was that people really prioritize safety and security. They said, that's the number one thing. If, I, if I'm letting someone into my home, I want to know that it's someone who I can trust and it's safe and secure. And I think the other piece here is that, you know, they wanted agency facilitation. They wanted oversight over this program. And so using all of those sorts of pieces here in, and embedding them within the Canada Home Share Program, the process was designed to make sure that all of the participants in this program are vetted, that we look at compatibility across a number of domains, including personality, including things like you know, whether you're a night owl or not, what your hobbies are, what your interests are, and, and how you can participate in that home of that older adult. So I think those are the things that we looked at. And I think the other part here is that this is a facilitated model. And if people have heard me talk about this previously, this is not going on Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace or, you know, Realtor.com and finding someone. This process is really facilitated by an outside person who in our model is a social worker who helps to ensure that there's compatibility, that there's oversight, and also that if there are issues that come up, that there is the ability for mediation to happen. And, you know, who better than a social worker than to connect people to health and social services and other needs that might emerge as your relationship in the program evolves. So I would say that those are the parts of the process that are really important. And other details that sometimes get overlooked is that it's not easy to just live with a person and for a lot of the older participants in this program, it's the first time that they're living alone or with someone else that's not their family. Mm. And so we do also go through education with them about living with someone else. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty robust process. Oh, that's that's amazing. You know, we know that, you know, we've spoken a lot here about the needs of older older uh, populations, mm -hmm. but there's also the, the huge uh, housing shortage for students. Mm -hmm. I mean, what an opportunity for the right student and the right older person to address both their needs. I think this is really important, again, going back to the intergenerational piece that you had mentioned, that the needs and actually um, the, the future needs and the current needs are actually not so different from, you know, the, the current younger adults that are becoming the future older adults and then the, the current older adults. And so when we think about this program, you know, I always think back to a couple instances and a, another one that I heard this morning. One morning while I was walking to class, going into teaching the gerontology program, I, I found my student. Well, I didn't find them, but I saw them sleeping in their car. And, you know, I later had a conversation with them about it. And they said, even if I can afford to live in the city, I can't get into the housing market. So it's not just about affordability, but it's about attainability. It, with a 1% vacancy rate, you're fighting against 20 or 30 other people to get into this program. And sometimes what you're doing is you're taking unsafe housing just because that's the option that's available to you or you're sleeping in the car. There was another participant in this program that really we had not thought about as an ideal fit for it because, well, they were 52, but students come of all ages. And so really that's the other piece here that we have to um, really reimagine who students are, what their needs are. And generationally, again, like I said, there's a lot of similarities and, and fewer differences than, than people recognize. And so that older student was matched with an older person who was able to stay in their home for much longer than you know they would have been able to had that person not been there. And just this morning, meeting with the Peel region, what we heard is that you know a lot of universities and colleges are facing housing shortages, and that international students are actually impacted in a very great way right now. So, international students are coming to Canada, 
they're unable to afford their homes or attain even a, a housing situation. And so they're spending their first couple months in university or college and coming to a new country, coming in and out of a, a homeless shelter. So these are the sorts of other issues. Amazing. Going back to your earlier question about what some of the problems are, well, the longer we stay in the program and we continue to think about it, the new um, issues emerge. Hmm. Wow, that's uh, that's amazing. Now, now, uh, Barb, did you uh, was there something you wanted to follow up on on that question, or did he uh, did he nail it? Did he uh, hit it there? <laughs> Yeah, I, I was actually going to ask about, um, uh, you know, existing programs for international students. Now, I think you may have been referring to post-secondary, but mm -hmm. I know in my community and many others, um, high schools, a lot of high schools have international programs, and there mm -hmm. have been a lot of people um, who have had students in their home, and they're used to it. And, you know, so so they've kind of overcome those initial um, uh, challenges or um, or resistance to having mm -hmm. somebody else in their home, and it's been a really positive experience. Um, but I also know that many of these programs are really searching for for homes mm -hmm. for the students. But at the same time, um, and I, it may be changing again, but with COVID, the number of international students had had really fallen significantly. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, you uh, poaching, uh, but uh, um, from from existing um, student placement programs uh, probably isn't something you necessarily want to do. But at the same time, there's probably are there learnings um, or there are opportunities uh, in thinking about the people who have had students like high school students in their home and now mm -hmm. um, you know may want to try something different have more mature students um, and and especially as they're aging and and many of the the homestay hosts for these kinds of programs are older mm -hmm. um, you know seeing it as a way to you know not just generate some extra income or exposure um, you know to another culture but thinking about you know other other benefits from that well, I can tell you that one of the benefits that I've seen from a few of the participants is that they get to meet new people every four months. And so they love being in this program because, like you said, they, they get to engage with people from different cultures and from different backgrounds and different experiences, and they learn from one another. And so this goes back to the point earlier that this isn't a needy older adult who has nothing to contribute. They have a lot to contribute, not only to the other individual who's living with them, but also to their communities and to our society. And we really want them to be able to age and thrive in place. And so I think that's a, the, a very key point here. Um, and I think that the part about, well, you know, is there resistance to programs like this one? I think there is there isn't resistance as much as there, it is that when we talk about it, people say, hmm, I, I never thought about that. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think that would be a wonderful opportunity. And I think when we frame it in a way where people recognize that they are going to be contributing to the life of that student and to their community and to their neighborhood and to their society, instead of it being, well, we're bringing in this student into your home to help you out and to give you a few hundred dollars, I think that people's perspective on this sort of program mm -hmm. really changes. And it's about exchange and, and purpose and intention and really contributing between the, the two individuals or more who are living together. That's really, really beautiful. Well, Raza, I, I'm I'm afraid to say here, but we're uh, we're we're out of time. And, and and as always, it's just a a pleasure to hear from you, who uh, you just are so grounded in 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 so much depth and knowledge about all of the uh, the areas of your expertise. And uh, Canada Home Share and housing for older people is certainly one of them. So I just want to say thank you so much for uh, for 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 being with us today and. Um, uh taking your year i know you've got a very busy schedule so thanks so much thank you very much as well and i look forward to seeing canada home share 2.0 in more communities across this country so thanks for all your support to everyone as well just thought i'd add before i hand it back to you barbara is is i invite you all to join us on november 10th when we'll be speaking with kate mulligan on social prescribing Kate's from the University of Toronto, and we're really excited about that. And we'll be sharing a, a video from one of our partners, Sage, uh, out in Edmonton as part of our uh, community sharing from, from Canada. So um, looking forward to chatting and being with you all again next time. Barb? 
Thanks, Raza, and, and thanks, Gregor. Uh, really interesting, you, even though I've been involved with Canada Home Share for a while, I'm always learning new things about it. So thank you so much. And I love the note you ended on, really, that reciprocity. It's the mutual benefit for, for participants in the program, whether they're the, the host or the student. So thank you for that. Um, and as Gregor said, two weeks from now, same time, same place, Kate Mulligan talking about social prescribing in conversation with Gregor. Um, we have uh, posted the, the links to the um, uh, to Help Age and the Home Share program and to CORE. And uh, we hope to see you all next week or two weeks in two weeks. Thank you very much, everyone.